Bible Steps to Prosperity. Did you know there's a principle in the Bible called seed time and harvest where you can put something in the ground in Old Testament days, planting, and then later you're going to receive a harvest. And uh, the same principle is true today when you use money. That is considered seed. You put that seed into the ministry of the Lord. You're putting it into the ground. And the Bible says that sometimes God gives a tenfold increase and even sometimes a hundredfold increase. My friend, can you imagine if you gave a dollar and God gave you a hundredfold increase, that would be a hundred dollars. If you gave a hundred dollars and God gave you a hundredfold increase, that would be ten thousand dollars. And then if you gave a thousand dollars, and God gave back to you a hundredfold increase, that would be a hundred thousand dollars. You see, when we work with our lives in God's economy, God is able to multiply whatever you or I do abundantly. And so today I want to continue our study on Bible steps to prosperity, and I want to go to Proverbs chapter 3, and show you this principle in the Bible. Now, uh, a lot of the teaching that I'm doing is from my book, Ancient Secrets of Success, a book that I wrote about 10 years ago on biblical prosperity. And so, over here in Proverbs 3, 9, it talks about giving, and everybody's heard about giving, and, and I'm not going to ask you to give a thing today, friends, so don't worry about that. It talks about giving, but in the next verse, it talks about God giving back to you more than you gave. So let's, let's dive into this and look at it. In Proverbs 3, 9, and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and that's whatever you have, and with the first fruits of all of your increase. So in biblical days, people worked in agriculture, much, much like my grandparents did. And so when they would plant something in the ground and harvest time came, there would be something that came in first. That was the first fruits. And so God said, if you'll give me the first fruits, if you'll trust me with that very first fruit, then I will give you an abundance after that. Now, there's no biblical law that says that you have to give anything today, friend. But I found that the people that don't give are the most miserable and usually the most broke. There is joy in giving, and when you give, it allows God to give back to you. See, there's a biblical principle, as we open with, of planting and then having a harvest later where God gives back to you. So God says that if you'll give of the first fruits of whatever you have, he says that your barns will be full and your vats will be overflowing. Now, in uh, most people don't understand that today because most people have never worked on a farm. But when I was a boy, between 9 and 11 years, I lived with my grandparents on the farm. And one of my earliest memories is as a nine-year-old boy pulling corn by hand in the fall, throwing it in the back of an old wagon that was pulled by two mules. And in fact, I was charged with uh, driving that wagon, and we took it back to the barn. And that wagon was full of corn, and we put it in the barn in what was called the corn crib. And that corn was already dry because it was late in the fall. It dried out. We put that corn in the crib. And that winter, we fed chickens with it. We fed hogs with it. We fed cattle with that. And with the hay that my grandfather grew, we fed those animals because the barn was overflowing. And, and then whatever they put aside, uh, you know, they might have... Uh, uh, honey or jelly that they prepared, but anyway, they were prepared for the next year. Well, today, I guess in the modern vernacular, if you give, the Lord can convert that into money and your bank account can be full and your pantry and your home can be full. 
The, the principle is the same. If you give God, you open up, uh, you open up the heart of God to give back to you. So number one in our study is that we should honor God with whatever we have. If we have wealth, we should give to God and we should give to others. And you say, well, well I don't have anything. I'm broke, you know, as Job's turkey. Well, my friend, if you're as broke as Job's turkey, the best thing you can do is give. Give. You don't give out of uh, your need. You give out of your abundance. So whatever you have that you can give, you can give of your time. You can, you, you can give of your physical labor. You can give of whatever you have, and it allows God to give you a blessing. So give and expect God to give back to you. Now, verse 10 says here, this is where the promise comes in. It says in verse 10, So shall thou, uh, thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. God can give back to you more than you gave. God can give you a tenfold blessing. God can give you a hundredfold blessing. When it says in verse 10, where we're promised a blessing by honor God, it says uh, that our Vats will brim with new wine, and our barns will be filled to overflowing. This suggests that when we acknowledge God by giving to Him in our financial matters, we open ourselves up to receive abundant blessings from God and, and provisions beyond our imagination. God can do more with your finances than you ever uh, realize he could. He can bless you so abundantly that you'll never have need. Now, in addition to that, verse 10 offers another promise, not only financial rewards, but it says that God will give us divine guidance and prosperity. The entire passage in Proverbs 3, 9, and 10 encourages a trust-based relationship with God in our finances. When we acknowledge God's role in our prosperity, we invite His guidance and wisdom into our financial decisions. You see, Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived, and because he applied these biblical principles, he was also the richest man that ever lived. So this divine guidance not only leads to material prosperity, but also to our well-being where our lives are enriched spiritually, emotionally, and relationshiply. We have relationships that are enriched. So my friend, I want to quote my good friend Zig Ziglar again. I, I often quote him in this teaching. Zig said, uh, you can have every." thing you want in life, talking about material things, if you just help enough other people get what they want out of life. Talking about serving. So if you have something that you can offer as a service that you can help others with, you know, you can get paid for that. So go out, serve God first, and then serve others and watch God bless you. Now, if you don't know the Lord and Savior, you need to give your life to Him. He died for you, and all you got to do is go and say, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner, come into my life and save me, and he'll do it. Now, we have started a whole list of teaching on Bible Steps to Prosperity. So if you would, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel and go back and look at the playlist of, uh, that, that, we've here, that we have here called Bible Steps to Prosperity, and if you will you know, watch those videos, I'm sure that God, not immediately, it doesn't happen today, or it could, but you know, whenever you plant, there's a time after you plant before the harvest comes. So don't expect it to happen overnight unless you have a, a, a need and you need a miracle. God can meet that need as well. So subscribe to our channel and watch these videos. And before you go, let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, somebody's watching this program today that is in tremendous need. I pray right now that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they would not be able to hold. 
Lord, fill their cup to overflowing. Meet their needs. I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, if you have a prayer request, please put it in the comments below, and we will pray for you, and we'll see you on the next of in this series of Bible Steps to Prosperity.